Hi folks, G3 here, and welcome to another instalment of my journey to go green. Today's episode is another one of my gardening catch-ups, letting you know what I've been doing over the last week or two, which will hopefully serve as some inspiration for you to get out in your garden and uh, do a few odd jobs. The first task I'm doing this week is I'm gonna be um, planting out these French beans that I've been growing here. They've got uh, nice and tall now, and so I think it's about time that I put them out into the raised beds. So I've got two different locations in the raised beds. There's gonna be a couple that are gonna go in at the end here, and there's gonna be one that's growing in here. So that's peas at the moment. So we're gonna have the one in there, and this is gonna be sweet corn and squash, and I'll have room for two at the end of there. I've got a load of canes. So I'm gonna get three canes, and I've chosen quite tall ones here because the beans can uh, can get quite high and these need to be pushed into the ground a little bit. And what I've got here are the devices for being able to push canes through and keep them separated. If I give you an example, And these allow you to create a, like a wigwam shape, and this will make sure they keep a uniform height. Now, the trouble with the shop bought one that I have had a few years is that it's starting to disintegrate and the plastic is just falling off there, unfortunately. So that's not looking, looking great. But what I have done, and what is easy enough for you to do, is on some old plant pots that I've um, had, some rather large ones, I've cut off the bottoms because these have natural holes in them that you can then use in place of the shop bought one. And they work just as well. So so if you're struggling for a use for some of these uh, old pots, then that's something you can do. So I've got a couple that I've created out of um, pots and I'll be using those because I need three wigwams in total. So I need to select canes of a similar height. And what I'm gonna be doing is having one wigwam over on this side. Just try and space them apart a bit. one in. I'm just trying to space the canes out in the ground thinking that I'm going to be having squash around the outside as well so I'm just trying to give them as much space as I can. That will do, tie it around there. So what you can see I'm doing here is, is actually tying the canes in at a certain point just to give them that rigidity otherwise they would just be moving around more in the wind there we go i think that should be fine all right so i've got my beans that i need to get in there i've got a little dibber that i can put underneath the pots to push them out i did water these yesterday so they should be reasonably moist in there i've got some nice roots here looking good and there are three beans in here Hopefully I should be able to split those out reasonably well and be able to position those around the cane. And I need to plant them um, so that they're near enough to the cane to cling on. And I will probably put maybe one in the middle as well. Just teasing the roots apart to separate them out. There we go, that's one bean in good condition. What I will see is if I can encourage it to do the same around the cane. I'm being very gentle removing that out. There we go. And keep that motion go on around that cane. There we go. Brilliant. That's good. Right. Separate these other two. one in place and the final one there. This one also is quite quite keen on bending round. There we go. 
Now I have an irrigation system in place here, so I will be able to get that set up to start watering these as well, but I will water in with a watering can to make sure everything's fine there. But I will need to put some slug pellets down for these, and as I've shown before, I use uh, ferric phosphate slug pellets. They are naturally occurring um, ingredient for those and they are approved by uh, the Organic Growers Association I believe if I remember rightly because they will impact the slugs and snails but they will then it will then degrade in the environment and uh, will be okay for, for other other creatures that might stumble across those slugs and snails and munch those in the future. So what I'm going to do now is water these in give them a good water, a good soap, and then I'm going to put the slug pellets on just to make sure they're safe. And I will keep an eye on these to make sure that they are twining around the, the canes because when you first put them in they lose their rigidity but once they've got the water coming back up into them they should then hopefully start curling around the, um, the canes. And I'll carry on putting squash around the outside of this netting to climb up the netting but the beans will be able to uh, grow up in the, uh, in the middle here. Brilliant. It's a warm day, um, you know, ideally this should be done first thing in the day or, or evening. But make sure that you water around the base of the plant rather than all over the, the plant itself because otherwise the, uh, the sun's rays are going uh, to travel through the water on the plant and, uh, and start causing it problems, you might be burning it. Whereas if you're putting the water at the base and avoiding the plant itself, then you're not going to have that issue. And it's really good idea to, to give these a good watering to start off with, just to help get that uh, connection between the roots and the water in the raised bed here. There you go, that's one of the jobs this week then. I've got the wigwam set up, I've tied them in at the top and I've got the divide right at the very top, which I've made out of old plant pots, the bottom from there. I've got three that have been pushed into the ground and then I've planted my beans at the bottom, watered them in well and also put some slug pellets down just to, uh, just to make sure because they would be vulnerable at this stage. So that's great, I'll keep an eye on them, make sure that they're twining around the um, bamboo canes. But we uh, will hopefully have some great French beans in the uh, not too distant future, which will be uh, very nice. We, uh, we do enjoy those. Right, on to the next job. One of the things I do is to save water from the house, like um, when we've been uh, washing rice or um, dish water that um, isn't, uh, isn't soapy or messy particularly, I can save that water and use it for watering plants in the garden. Now I have covered this in a video before, I'll include a link up above so you can have a look back on that, but what I've got here is a bucket of the water and I'm going to be using it to water these uh, courgette plants that I've got in here. I can water from above and I've created a bowl to, to get that water in to sort of try and uh, keep the water in for the plant but equally I have got to put in these tubes that will help water these plants. Now this is directing it towards the roots so it's getting it where it needs it because these are water hungry plants and also as they grow you get a number of leaves coming off and it can be a little bit tricky sometimes getting to the, to the right point so it's easy enough just for me to pour the water down these tubes until it gets to the top and I know that's a reasonable amount that's going down there. And that'll help encourage the root growth because it's searching for the water and it will find it just below. And because I'm not watering on top, I'm not going to lose anything from uh, uh, evaporation of that water on a warm day. There we go. I know they've had a water. I've used old water from the house. Great use or reuse of that water. I'm able to water these plants at the right point. It's getting to the roots. And uh, so, yeah, a win-win situation there. 
And one thing I must show you is how much life there is in the pond at the moment, the wildlife pond, because we had some toad spawn and we now have lots of tadpoles around the outside. They are completely throughout this pond. It's amazing, there's so many in there. It's great to see that little bit of life. <laughs> so hopefully we're going to have lots of toads in the not too distant future. But they're enjoying the sunshine and uh, I think nibbling a bit of the, the weed that's around the uh, outside. Let me have a look. I don't know if you're going to be able to see those in there, but if I move these out of the way, there we go. They're all over the place. If you build it, they will come.